<laughs> when this episode airs, the baby is pro- pro- most likely here already. <laughs> let's all hope so. Let's 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 send all the good and positive energy that the baby's already here. Please. And then we're like, oh god damn it, it's here. <laughs> How nice what is was it before it was here? <laughs> <laughs> mm, I don't know about that. What's That'll so take me a while, I think, to get yeah, to that point. Yeah, I know. Was so quiet and so like chill, and you know, you yeah. don't have to worry about anything. And now all of a sudden, there's something here that completely is um, in need of your supervision. Mm-hmm. I mean, at we all have times. a dog. No, I know, but he also needs supervision at almost all times. He can be alone a lot. We can leave him yeah, alone and that's stuff, true. and that's not possible with the baby for a while. You sure we teach the dog <laughs> how, to, how to babysit? That would be that actually would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's get into the episode. Let's do it. Back with an episode, everybody, with me, Wavy, and it is Danny. Hello, I'm listening. Are you listening? Are you? <laughs> I was asking you. I was asking the listener. Oh, okay. The listener's like, what? <laughs> yeah, no. Um, today we're talking about the simulation theory. And if you don't know what it is, here's a quick little thing for you. Simulation theory posits that our rea- our reality is a simulated, commuter-generated experience rather than a physical, tangible ex- existence. The idea suggest- suggests that advanced civilizations possible far in the future have created simulations with conscious beings like us. This concept gained popularity in philosophy and science fiction. The origin of simulation theory can be traced to different sources. Philosophers like René Descartes explored the concept of reality and deception. In the 20th century, philosopher Nick Bostrom formulated the simulation arguments suggesting that if certain conditions are met, it's more likely we live in a simulation. Mm -hmm. Additionally, advancements in technology and the rise of virtual reality have fueled discussions about the nature of reality, contributing to the appeal of simulation theory. Yeah. So, we I think we mentioned it at some point the the concept of uh, simulation. Yeah, I don't remember what episode, but <clears throat> we've never done like an episode on simulation theory. But we have definitely it's come up in within another topic at some yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's a cool concept, and um, I get why a lot of uh, people these days. Um, believe in that and even uh like scientists um or like it's not a stupid thing that people believe in but uh, even scientists like renowned scientists renowned that's the mm-hmm. right word are su- not supporting it but are saying that this could be technically a thing mm-hmm. which is kind of crazy yeah <laughs> sorry um i don't know i don't buy it It's not something that ever crosses my mind as like, this is something that's happening. I could see it being something that happens, like that you could at some point in the future forever live within the simulation. You know, like this whole like, I don't want to ever die thing. That maybe at some point it's possible to be hooked up to a simulation and then you live forever through that simulation. I could see that being tangible in the future Mm -hmm. i don't believe in any way that we're currently in a simulation the thing is it's um like there's there's too much for me that's that's too real to feel like okay this could be not actually happening yeah but if you think about like the matrix uh the movie where the machines basically um uh use human beings because of their electricity as batteries essentially Mm. to fuel their energy needs and they found out that um like they could just basically harvest us but we give way more energy if we live and so they put us in that 
uh, simulation, which mm. is the Matrix, which is a simulated world uh, which feels and behaves re like reality. Yeah. And so technically... Um, <coughs> but they're also hooked up to it to their knowledge. Like they're, I mean, they're aware of the fact that they're being hooked up to it. They, I mean, it's a little different, sure, because their bodies are in the real world, mm -hmm. but the mind is in the But that's, see, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm saying I, I believe that it could be tangible in the future to have something like that. But that's the point. That's but I don't point. believe that it's happening now. But that's the point that people make that we are not even real. Like we mm -hmm. don't have a physical body. We are just code that is running in a hyper realistic simulation that is not even uh fathomable fathomable in terms of how that works because it's so advanced see i don't buy it it's it's the thing is it's a cool it's a cool uh concept i, I believe mm, i don't know no i agree i think it's it's interesting that the but you know then it kind of goes along with like conspiracy theories doesn't it is, doesn't that kind of fall into a category of conspiracy because there's no real proof against it. People try to find proof. They try to find evidence of this being a thing. And then they spend, some people spend yeah. their the majority of their time obsessing yeah. over proving that this is a this is really happening. Yeah, yeah. No, no, right. Or obsessing the opposite direction, like trying to make sure like maybe there are people who are literally driving themselves insane because they're constantly stuck between am i in a simulation or is this real yeah no no i totally agree i totally agree um so neil degrasse tyson um the scientist said something really interesting i tried to 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 quote it it's a good friend of mine a rich god he was a colleague of mine back when he was in Princeton. when i was in Princeton, deep thinker like calculating the ends of things nice business statistics and blah blah he's heavily quoted in this book the doomsday calculation <clears throat> Um, and I'm now convinced, now you already go ahead, um, here's what convinced me you're not, we are not in a simulation. What to do all the simulated universe has in common? They can, they have the power to simulate themselves. And that's what he says. So basically, um, we're at the point uh, that we can simulate worlds. Mm -hmm. So we have the power now with AI and with technology and with computer power to simulate worlds. Mm -hmm. And world sims like if you break it down technically the the game sims is a simulation yeah. it's a very basic yeah um it can technically work on its own but it need it needs input it mm -hmm. needs user input to evolve <laughs> but there are simulations that are completely um without input without user input so they get they, they start mm -hmm. and they go anywhere they want to go mm -hmm. and so um and that's what he says in that in in the into it's like a, a, a I think it got shared a couple of million times already on social media. So you probably have seen it already. But um, he he says that once you go that far, you could argue, okay, what if like for example, there's a simulation running somewhere here on mm -hmm. Earth right now on a computer that does exactly what our world is doing or what we mm -hmm. are, what what our simulation could be you mm -hmm. know that there are people or things in this simulation who behave a certain way because that's how they behave in the world and because of the laws and whatever they have in the world and, and they don't know that they're in a simulation mm -hmm. and you know yeah but see it's so hard for me to even grasp the concept because when you talk about like the yeah. sims you yeah. know yeah that's something that I loved playing, especially like the earlier versions of it. But I can't imagine like if those <clears throat> characters, let's call them, in my simulation yeah. had conscious thought. You know what I mean? No. Like, brought, no. I mean, in the game, sure, in the game you can say they have free will. So in a sense, yeah. they kind of do, but it's programmed. You know, it's programmed to be, okay, after x happens then y happens yeah or mm. here's a series of things that could happen and it's just random code you know like this person this this person in my game has free will and let's say oh they go to the bathroom okay great mm -hmm. afterwards they decide either to wash their hands or go straight to the kitchen and cook something mm -hmm. you know where it's like they have like a list of things that could happen and yeah but i can't imagine them having like conscious 
I mean, that's not. technically that's technically machine learning. So machine learning works exactly that way, where you either give the code a task mm -hmm. and it learns or tries to learn, and based on the past behavior, it it, it in, improves. So, for mm -hmm. example, they they I mean, that's it's been a couple of years now that they did it. But for example, they gave a machine or like a code two legs, mm -hmm. and um, they just said you need to go from this point to this point. And so um, over thousands of iteration, it learned how to walk. Mm -hmm. And it learned to walk in that simulation. So there are physics, <coughs> there are like um, um, obstacles in the way. Mm -hmm. And it learned by machine learning, by, by doing it over, 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 over again, how to, to improve and how to walk. Mm -hmm. And that's technically what in the simulation, how things would behave. So there is code. And it does something and it sees, okay, this is not the outcome I want. So I try something else. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. 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 I don't know. It's interesting. Um, so I already mentioned The Matrix. The Matrix, I mean, is like probably the most iconic film that rela relates to mm -hmm. the simulation theory, even though it's a little different than Inception, for example. Inception is also yeah. kind of doing that. Especially because it's still programmed. It's a programmed dream. So it's still <clears throat> exactly. a so, simulation. Right. So they feed him the necessary things, put themselves into mm -hmm. the dream and play it out. Mm -hmm. But it's a simulation. Exactly. Tron, the movie Tron, where they get sucked into a computer-generated world mm -hmm. and have to do like the, the, the races with yep. the bikes. And technically, the Truman Show is also I was just going to say that. I was going to... That was the first one that came to my mind. Where I was like, it's not really a simulation, but I mean, it, it is. But it's it is. It's not a computer generated. It's not a computer generated. It is someone... It's a man... It's, a, it's essentially a, a realistic... Uh, someone in, who thinks that they're living in the yeah, real world, but yeah. everybody around them knows that they're not. So it's, it's yeah. in, a little different in that sense, because technically, he's living in a real world, but... It's all for a TV show. So it's like, it's still like a set, you know, yeah. like it's still a, a film set or a TV set <clears> or a studio <throat> or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But we should watch the Truman Show. That's a great movie. It's a great movie. Anyways. <laughs> the, the Truman Show is one of those movies where I could, that to me is more realistic of a thing that could happen <laughs> yeah. than this whole simulation theory thing like where it's like computer generated or yeah. you know like to me that's more realistic that someone would be because people humans are have like a sick sense of humor yeah yeah um the the uh, from plato the philosopher the greek philosopher he had the allegory of the cave you know what it is I, it sounds familiar, it's but I don't know. It's phil a philosophical metaphor found in uh, the book six, uh, book seven of, of Plato's Republic. And it presents a story where prisoners are chained into, inside a dark cave facing a wall. Mm -hmm. And they perceive shadows cast by objects behind them and make these shadows for reality. For example, so there is light coming in mm -hmm. and the light projects shadows from like the outside world onto the wall. And so they mistake it for And the, the prisoners who sit in front of that wall think that's reality so think that that's what they see um is real so the allegory symbolizes the journey of enlightenment and the distinction between the world of appearance so the shadows and the world of true forms outside the cave mm -hmm. it serves as a metaphor for the, philo for the philosopher's quest for knowledge and understanding beyond more sensory perceptions mm -hmm. and the allegory of ca of the cave is, is essentially the was essentially the 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 main puzzle piece for the matrix Mm -hmm. where you know they sit there and watch something or 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 live in something that they believe is true and neo neo for example is is then escaping mm -hmm. with a help mm -hmm. that cave and and sees okay this is not the reality yeah yeah uh, we are we have we are basically prisoners and i don't know it, it, the the if you if you really dig deep into the simulation fear i feel like um the the question of what's like the uh the, the what is it called the the thing of life the the purpose of life the meaning, the meaning of life comes into place as well which is also a phil philosophical question mm. because like if you think okay if <clears throat> if we are not real if you if we are really 
just part of like this game that someone plays basically yeah. could be a game it could be a simulation whatever and um just let it you know run its course so to say um what what is the point of us being here mm. when we're just part of this like weird little thing for example i mean imagine there's a civil civilization somewhere far in the future and we are just they are basically just simulating how um intelligent life on a planet on a be on a habitable planet could thrive or not mm -hmm. you know like they they basically put certain rules and certain physical um, um, boundaries in place, for example, with CO2 levels and mm -hmm. all that stuff. And they just, you know, we're all the same, but then all of this on their wars because we believe in different things and all that shit and they just watch us and see, okay, fuck. Um, so it's it, just a test. It, right, it's a test. So how a far... test to find the perfect humanity. Right, yeah, yeah. So how far can a, a modern, intelligent, and then putting that on the air quotes, um society go until they either go distinct because they kill themselves or or they thrive and 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 survive and become something um yeah more advanced i'm kind of cynical in that sense because i feel like no matter what scenario you put them in i feel like humans will always always find a way to somehow start a war over something yeah like, I don't think there is a perfect scenario where that the, doesn't happen. Neil deGrasse Tyson says, um, so the, the 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 little parts or the little time slots where there was no war on Earth is when the person who oversees the simulation is on lunch. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> so so he feels, he, he basically says, or he, or he chokes about, okay, those things or people or whatever oversee the simulation put those conflicts on purpose on the on this earth or or in the game or in the simulation mm. to see how it plays out mm. the thing like oh there is a new war in the middle east <laughs> oh there is a new conflict between north korea and south korea yeah 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 i don't know i don't know i don't know what else i can add to it it's, i just i mean we don't have to talk about a uh, long it's a short episode that's okay though I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know. I don't know. I I, I have nothing more to, to add, really. Uh, I, just one more thing. I think it's an interesting concept. I think it's also very interesting to just read about it. I would not, like, with everything that, there is no, like, evidence for it, obviously, right now. There's no But there's proof. also no evidence to the contrary, right. either. There's no, like... So it's in either direction that's it, there's that's no why it's proof. a theory so yeah. that's why it's that's a that's why it's a theory and i think that's that's uh we have to just look at it at like that we mm. have to look at it like okay this is a theory i mean it's a philosophical theory there right? this <laughs> could be a thing but it could also not be a thing yeah so yeah and that's that i think that's just how we have to keep it in mind mm. for now but I, I i think it's interesting and then the fact that um, like Neil, Deg like people like Neil deGrasse Tyson also think about it and sh you mm. know theorize about it and just say, okay, there is technically evidence that would support that theory, but at the same time, there's a lot of evidence who just or or there's no evidence that really proves it. Is mm. is kind of interesting, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I will put a question <laughs> in the Spotify um, thing where you can just answer if you believe in the simulation theory or if you feel like we're living in a simulation or a tv show or a tv show right if you are part of a tv show mm -hmm. sometimes you know when i w i remember when i watched the truman show the first time mm -hmm. i did I you like, like act as I, if people I, were watching you after yeah, yeah me too yeah totally um and also um what's also was also weird like sometimes uh, after i had my accident mm -hmm. i felt like oh maybe i'm still in a coma Mm -hmm. and all the things that are just playing out right now is not real this is just my head you know it's interesting because i say i don't believe in like the whole simulation thing but sometimes i and actually more uh, pretty often i would say for not like on a daily basis but at least twice a week maybe sometimes i have the thought where i'm like what if i'm not alive like what if i had some horrible accident because i feel like my life is so kind of like great right now 
And so like the whole like coming to Austria thing and like just that was such a big switch for me, like in terms of my mental Mm -hmm. health, in terms of my quality of life. And sometimes I think like, what if I was in like this horrible plane crash and I never actually made it here? And all of this is like some limbo yeah, maybe. you know, like that kind of stuff. I I think Shit about people she found out. <laughs> to abort. I think about that stuff sometimes, where it's like, okay, what if I'm not actually alive, and yeah, you know, these things are just all in my head, or like you said, what if I'm just in a coma and could be. it's all, you know, I'm gonna wake up at some point and could, still be could be in Portland or something. Could be. <laughs> Okay, everybody, if yeah. you like what you're listening, please uh, subscribe to the podcast. Please share the podcast. It helps us a lot. Um, please head over to our Patreon, where Joe is currently the only Patreon member. Hey, Joe. Um, and I just want to quickly explain Patreon. I mean, it's basically a monthly fee. You can do it once. You can do it a couple of months. You can stop at any time. You get something for it. There are two tiers, and that goes directly into the podcast. So we can you know get better gear i have to probably at some point this year get a new laptop and stuff like that so it goes directly into that and we can provide you with new episodes exactly okay that's it everybody until next time watch out for deer